What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV and today I'm sitting down with Oliver who in some of his earlier assessments for advanced math scored a 46%, 51% in his HSC trials and yet was able to turn that around to score an 86% in his HSC exam itself and overall ended up scoring an 84% for HSC Math, so a band five. Now, the point of, I think, what we're gonna be unpacking in today's interview is that it's really easy for students, I think, to just quit after you have a couple of poor assessments. And in all of this case, this wasn't you know, a couple of early assessments, this was right up into trials itself. And so all of this story is a great example of the fact that you can significantly improve your results in a relatively short period of time between your trials and your HSC, because Oliver's story and his eventual results certainly show that. So welcome, Oliver. Hi. I'd love to find out a little bit more about what that journey looked like, because I think that yeah. this is a common challenge that a lot of students experience. Now, just to, to kick things off, um, you know, we've got you know almost a, you know a thirty five percent improvement that happens between yeah. trials and the HSC itself in terms of your HSC exam mark, which is yeah. quite a remarkable turnaround. So congratulations. Thanks. Did you enjoy maths? No, <laughs> uh, I didn't enjoy it at all. Uh, I definitely found it by far the most challenging subject. Mm -hmm. uh, well, for me, if some, I found a lot of people find maths quite challenging and I thought uh, advanced maths is just, I just thought for me, it's too hard. I just can't do it. And I thought the gap between standard and advanced was too large and I really needed something in between and obviously there's nothing there, so you just kind of have to stick stick with whatever choice you make, whether it's standard or advanced, and I stuck with advanced. So you, you didn't drop, was that also influenced by university and sort of what, because I know you're obviously doing economics at ANU, there's a mathematical component that sort of, that, you know, draws yeah. from advanced and extension concepts. So it definitely should have been something that I thought about. Uh, I hadn't actually considered that. So, you know, in reflection, uh, definitely glad I didn't drop. Okay. Because uh, for the stuff that I was interested in, interested in, there's definitely a maths component to it, mm -hmm. and doing advanced maths, you know, while it may not be fun, was is very sort of allowed me to get into the courses that I wanted to do. You kept it. Now you kept yeah. it despite, as you shared, you know, a 46, yeah, give or take a 51 in trials. Yeah. I mean. How did you feel when you got those results? Obviously not great, but at my school, I think a lot of people didn't do very well in advanced maths. And I think one, everyone's really, everyone was really stressed. Uh, obviously, Corona really uh, made learning for maths in particular, I found at least, uh, it made that really quite tough. Um, you know, several teacher swaps and things like that uh, just made it, you know, just, organizationally quite quite difficult so while I may not have done that well in the beginning I wasn't necessarily like the only one who wasn't doing that well so I didn't really feel like oh gee me in particular like you're screwed yeah so. I'm not particularly screwed it's just yeah. okay it's you a know, tough course it's a tough course so that was my mentality for maths advance is that pretty much everyone's finding it hard. And that sounds like a great perspective because I think it is easy when you get a poor result to individualize it, yeah. right? To go, I'm screwed, I'm stupid, yeah. you know, um, I can't do this, like I'm stuffed. Instead yeah. of going, well, wait a minute, <laughs> this is just hard, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, this isn't actually an indication necessarily of the fact that I'm incapable, but it, yeah. it's just challenges. It's just about perspective in terms of who are you surrounding yourself with, in terms of maths, obviously. And a lot of people I was surrounding myself with, you know, they were having a lot of similar issues with maths. So then you, you managed to turn it around um, and was the band five overall result you ended up getting, you know, a surprise? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I still don't really know how it was possible because <laughs> in the exam, I, I try hard during the exam, but, you know, that's kind of that's that's kind of it in terms of the exam. You, you have you do one long shot of it, and you're like, okay. You hope, right? You do your best. Yeah. And it's I did my best. Now I sit here and wait for the end of the exam. See what the results are. Yeah. yeah. So it was definitely a surprise, and I think having a fairly relaxed attitude during the HSC 
helped a lot because I think maths is a subject where you can get very, very easily uh, flustered and stressed and you can just, things that you know how to do and things that you know that you know how to do, uh, sometimes you just, you just can't do it because you're just stressed and you, it just, it's blocked from your mind. It's, the stress clouds your memory. And I think being relaxed is, was the most, like up in the most important thing for me to do better in maths is just being more relaxed. That's really important, I agree. I mean, I think maths, you're right. I, I feel like it's one of the subjects that, that m students get almost the most anxious about, you know, yeah, like, because it's a challenging subject and then, you know, you just, it, it could just uh, then impact your ability to perform well. Yeah, um, absolutely. It, it's def it was definitely my most stressful subject. So what did you do then in terms of, you know, between trials and HSC, what, what did that, that period look like? What were you doing? I know you were more relaxed, which was important. Yeah. Alongside that though, what were you doing in terms of prep, study, support yeah. to, to sort of, you know, help you at least be at your best clearly, which it sounds like you were for that exam? I had a lot of support from my tutor, Julian, and I also had a family friend that helped me on weekends, Angus. Um, and obviously not everyone's in a position where they can just access tutoring, you know, whether it's financial or, you know, whatever. but. I found that helpful for me. With maths, motivation was the big problem. Uh, so having something to motivate me, whether that's someone kind of giving you a kick and going, all right, come on, man, like, you know, start working, or whether it's a course that I really want to do, or, you know, a mark that you really want to achieve or something. I think you've got to have a, some sort of motivator to do well in maths, otherwise it's very easy to not do well. Uh, so in terms of what I actually did, um, I found that chapter reviews, that was something that wasn't too difficult, it wasn't something that was too annoying to do, and just sitting down and doing uh, all the chapter reviews, and then once you're kind of done with the chapter reviews and you feel like, okay, you know, it's, I've finished most of it with not too much, you know, extreme difficulty and grief, uh, then moving on to past papers and just doing, doing everything that you, was relevant because obviously the new syllabus came out and that was, that was real tricky. And you know, you only got one or two past papers to use. So you have no choice but to use the old ones and then just root out the things that aren't actually relevant and just not do those and just do the things that are relevant. So chapter reviews and past papers. It sounds like then it was just disciplined application to yeah. questions like doing as many questions as you could yeah. did you focus on key areas like were you you know just trying to get coverage or were you diving in and trying to like hit a couple of areas in particular uh, i think because maths at least for me was just a discipline thing identifying the areas where you're not actually that strong in uh that was not too hard to do because you know you just look at it and you go well i don't know how to do that and those are the things that really suck working on because it's really annoying. So for me, that was things like statistics and some of the probability stuff. I was just like, ah, oh, so boring, can't handle it, really don't want to do it. So I'm just kind of going to ignore it. So not ignoring it and that's where the support comes in. Having some sort of support or some sort of motivating factor to help you do those uh, or to help you, you know, push you to do them. Uh, that was that was probably the most helpful is getting help and doing work on the things that I didn't want to work on. So again, I mean, this is a theme I think that I hear frequently and certainly in our conversations has been you got to focus on your weak areas. Like the yeah, best way absolutely. to quickly change your results is to identify where you're not good at and instead of avoiding it, yeah. actually lean in and, and really yeah. sort of focus on those. Yeah. Um, any sort of final tips or advice that you'd have for students who are, are wanting, you know, maybe struggling with maths, maybe not necessarily enjoying it, it's not their favourite subject. Yeah. What advice would you give them to try to help them turn things around? First of all, consider which maths is the, is the right one for you. So whether that's standard, advanced, extension one or extension two, just, you know, have a good think about which one's actually necessary and which one you need to do. Uh, because unnecessary grief is unnecessary. Once that's done, do your chapter reviews. Just do all of them and especially do the ones that you really don't want to do. So for me, that was like, I don't remember the number, nine and 10. I really didn't want to do them. I avoided them. I did them at the very end. 
doing those ones that you don't want to do and doing the questions you don't want to do and using support and resources that are available to you, uh, that's the key.